deaths, arrests, and the most outrageous bakery owners to ever hit the small screen. Reality shows often bring fame to participants, but they can also bring a dark side. When the Duggars decided to put their super large family on reality TV in 19 Kids and Counting in 2008, little did they know it would expose all their dirty secrets. The biggest shocker they kept behind closed doors was that the family's eldest son, Josh Duggar, had sexually molested multiple young girls, including four of his own sisters, several years earlier. By June 2015, the show was permanently canceled by TLC. Months later, Josh would drop another bomb, confessing he had been unfaithful to his wife and that he was a member of the adultery website Ashley Madison. In a now-deleted statement on the family's website, he said, "...I have been the biggest hypocrite ever. While espousing faith and family values, I have secretly, over the last several years, been viewing pornography on the internet, and this became a secret addiction, and I became unfaithful to my wife." Josh was eventually convicted on child pornography charges in 2021 and was sentenced to over 12 years in prison. Had he and his family never put their lives on television, these facts may have never been dug up. Phaedra Parks and Apollo Nita's entire marriage was played out on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. The couple wed one year before she joined the series in 2010. The pair would go on to welcome kids in 2010 and 2013. But things quickly went south after Nita was charged and sentenced to eight years in prison for mail, bank, and wire fraud. He originally faced 30 years, but his sentence was reduced for cooperating with the investigation. But while the former couple ironed out the details of their long-dragged-out divorce, Parks faced another crisis of her own. She got caught up in a nasty web of lies involving her Real Housewives castmates, Candy Burris and Portia Williams. As the story goes, Parks spread the lie that Burris and her husband, Todd Tucker, planned to drug Williams and take her home. Speaking on the reunion special, Parks tried to excuse the gossip. I else. repeated it because I heard it. Parks did apologize, but her credibility as a friend and as an attorney was shot. She was ultimately let go from the show after season 9, and Williams felt their entire friendship was for the cameras. Chris Bukowski rose to fame in the 2012 season of The Bachelorette, but just a handful of years later, he would announce his retirement from reality TV, saying the experience nearly ruined his life and his relationship with his family. In all, he appeared on The Bachelorette, Bachelor Pad, and Bachelor in Paradise. Penning an open letter on Rant Now, Bukowski wrote, "...Bachelor Pad was the pinnacle of my bachelor career, to say the least. It almost completely ruined me, my family, and my career. As I mentioned before, I couldn't believe the hate towards me." After begging to be let on and rejected from Andy Dorfman's Bachelorette season in 2014, things had gotten worse. He wrote, "...at this point of my career, I had officially become the biggest joke on reality TV. Attempting to fix my reputation had ultimately made it worse. Looking back, he said TV had driven him down some terrible places." He added, "...we all have our battles, but my TV obsession had taken me down a dark road. I was battling anxiety that led me down a road where I couldn't find happiness. I compounded the problem by getting addicted to my anxiety medication." Rob Kardashian is not cut out for reality TV. More than any of his sisters, Rob has experienced so many emotional ups and downs, including a 2012 episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians when he burst into tears talking with a family therapist. My anger, a lot of it, stems from like the working environment because they all kind of put this cloud on me like I'm a loser. For Rob, he felt like he was losing out on opportunities in business because his mother was only concerned about his sisters. For the next several years, Rob left the public eye, rarely leaving sister Khloe Kardashian's house. Things began to turn around for Rob when he started dating Black China in early 2016. China managed to pull Rob out of his shell and back into normal life. But their romance was never solid, as evident from their 2016 spinoff series, Rob and China. The couple was on again, off again, but eventually split in 2017 after welcoming their daughter Dream. With their tumultuous split came the end of their reality show. The two eventually came to a joint custody agreement in 2017. In an August 2023 interview with Entertainment Tonight, China gave an update on the former couple's co-parenting relationship. She said, "...I feel like with everything, time heals everything, and people change, and situations change, and you get to see the situation for what it is, and the situation is Dream." Drugs, rehab, prison, and more have all been part of Amber Portwood's young life as a star of Teen Mom. 
While some may have seen being on reality TV as a way out of sticky living situations, Portwood seemingly squandered the opportunity. She was sentenced to five years in jail for drug possession charges stemming from a December 2011 incident. During a 2013 interview with Dr. Phil, Portwood confessed that she abused drugs while both filming the reality show and while she was in rehab. Every time you see me on that show, I am hyped. By the spring of 2017, things had not improved for Portwood. She revealed in an episode of Teen Mom that she was re-diagnosed with borderline personality and bipolar disorder, and due to the medication, which she'll have to take for the remainder of her life, doctors suggested she should not get pregnant, as the medication can have adverse effects on the fetus. Portwood did, however, give birth to her second child, James, in 2018, with her then-boyfriend, Andrew Glennon. After a battle in court after their eventual breakup, Glennon was granted custody of their son, in 2022. Stephen Fowler appeared in a 2009 episode of Wife Swap, a reality show in which one half of two couples switch places to live with the other spouse. In the episode, a woman from rural Missouri moved in with Fowler at his home in San Francisco, and audiences watched Fowler continually belittle her intelligence. At one point in the episode, she read her new household rules to Fowler and his children. He responded with, You read that so well. Congratulations. I didn't know you could read. Fowler's behavior did not go unnoticed by the viewing audience and by those in his real life. As was reported in 2009, his stint on the show resulted in much backlash, including a website called StephenFowlerSucks.com and a Facebook group titled, I Cannot Stand Stephen Fowler from Wife Swap. Two years later, the controversy over his appearance had yet to die down. He opened up about the experience, telling the Noe Valley Voice his appearance on Wife Swap resulted in him being fired from his job and causing a major strain on his marriage. He said, I do regret going on the show. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. However, Fowler also contended that what viewers saw wasn't his actual personality, claiming producers pushed him to overreact. He added, They strongly encouraged me to be acerbic. I was playing a character. I was playing a role, like Simon Cowell on steroids. Renee Alway was among the models competing on Cycle 8 of America's Next Top Model, making it to the final three in 2007. Alway expected that the exposure from the show would pave the way for a fruitful modeling career. Yet, that never happened. She wound up becoming addicted to prescription painkillers, which ultimately led to heroin and homelessness. In 2013, Palm Springs police responded to a report of a suspicious woman seen within a supposedly vacant house. After a six-hour standoff with a SWAT team, a gun-wielding Alway was arrested and charged with several felonies. She eventually cut a plea deal and was sentenced to 12 years in prison. In 2018, Alway was released from prison after serving five years. About one year later, she was arrested in 2019. She was hit again with several charges, including domestic violence and making terrorist threats. In addition to violating the terms of her parole, she was sent back to prison and was reportedly eligible for parole in spring 2023. Teresa Judice became a standout on The Real Housewives of New Jersey, and she's best remembered for dramatically flipping over a table during a restaurant fight. With her star on the rise, which also included a 2012 stint on The Celebrity Apprentice, it all came crashing down in 2013, when she and husband Joe Judice were indicted on 39 federal charges. This included bank fraud, tax fraud, bankruptcy fraud, and conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud. They ended up pleading guilty to a smaller list of offenses, and in 2014, Teresa was sentenced to 15 months in prison, while her husband was ordered to serve 41 months. She described the prison experience after her release to Good Morning America. It was hell. It was like, you know, it was definitely living in hell. Joe was eventually released in March 2019. Just a few months later, in December 2019, the Judices announced their split and finalized their divorce the following year. Appearing on a BravoCon panel in 2022, Teresa was adamant that her Real Housewives fame was the reason why she and her ex-husband received such severe sentences. She said, I got used as an example. What's the saying? The good comes with the bad? Meaning like, because I was on TV, if I was just a regular housewife, I probably wouldn't have went to jail. Attorney Tom Girardi was frequently seen on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills as the husband of cast member Erica Jane, with the couple showcasing their luxurious home and lifestyle on screen. In late 2020, Jane filed for divorce. Shortly after, however, the two were hit with a lawsuit alleging that Girardi's law firm embezzled millions of dollars in settlement money that was meant to be paid out to the relatives of the victims of the 2018 Lion Air Flight 610 crash. In addition, the lawsuit suggested that the couple's divorce was a sham to avoid paying the money. 
Fast forward to February 2023, when Girardi and his law firm CFO were indicted on federal fraud charges, accused of ripping off multiple clients out of over $15 million. The FBI's press release read, the defendants exploited the hardships endured by their clients and took advantage of their unfamiliarity with the legal process while they denied victims what was rightfully due to them in order to fund their lavish lifestyles. Gia Alamond appeared in season 14 of The Bachelor in 2010 as one of the bevy of women vying for the heart and attention of pilot Jake Pavelka. As viewers will recall, she was booted off the show the week before the final row ceremony. However, in a 2010 post-elimination interview, she revealed that despite not being chosen, she loved her time on the show. She said, "'Oh wow, it really did change my life. I have no regrets.'" She returned to the franchise later that same year in the first season of the spin-off series, Bachelor Pad, and was back for its second season the following year. In August 2013, Alamond attempted to take her own life after a fight with her boyfriend, Ryan Anderson, that was allegedly over her suspicions that he cheated on her. She tragically died the following day after being taken off life support. She left a note reading, "'Mom gets everything.'" While it's impossible to know how or if her Bachelor experience contributed to her tragic death, series creator Mike Fleiss told People magazine that she passed an extensive background check and psychological evaluation before being selected for the show. In addition, then-host Chris Harrison explained that there's also a support system in place after participants in the show exit. He said, "...we go to great lengths to make sure these people are okay. We have a support system." Arguably the most notorious episode of Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares aired in 2013 and featured Amy's Baking Company of Scottsdale, Arizona. In the series, Ramsay utilizes his signature tough love approach to help struggling restaurants find success by identifying and then remedying each eatery's various shortcomings. Ramsay, however, met his match with restaurant owners Amy and Sammy Buzaglo and threw in the towel. And if you're not willing to change, I'm not gonna butt heads, argue, Scream, whatever you want to say. The Buzaglos responded by suing Ramsey for alleged sexual harassment. A statement from the show's producers refuted their claims and said it was untrue. Meanwhile, the Buzaglos also began feuding with viewers who'd left negative comments about them on Facebook. Two years later, Amy's baking company closed after the couple sold the building. In 2018, they moved to Israel. Speaking about the experience to the New York Post later, Amy said, "...I literally just wanted to die. They really made us seem like horrible people." Making its TV debut in 2010, The Real Housewives of DC proved to be a rare failure in the franchise, being canceled by Bravo after just one season. Among the cast was Kat Omini, hailing from London as one of the first Brits to appear in the Housewives franchise. Her husband, Charles Omini, served as a White House photographer during the George W. Bush and Barack Obama administrations before becoming the personal photographer of Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Shortly after the show ended, so did the couple's marriage. Kat told Parade in 2010, "...obviously, my marriage fell apart, and so my life has been completely turned upside down and inside out. I've had to do some major soul-searching, and I still am." Her ex-husband, however, rude the day he agreed to appear on the show. When it aired, he refused to watch. Speaking to the New York Times, he said, "...it's just too painful. I have very few regrets in my life, but this is the one." Ultimately, he found his involvement with the show to be an embarrassment, admitting he only signed on because it was something Kat was passionate about. In 2005, Paula Goodspeed was among the aspiring singers to audition before judges Simon Cowell, Randy Jackson, and Paula Abdul on American Idol. I really like Paula Abdul a lot. She's really cool. Goodspeed also discussed how her hobby was drawing pictures of Abdul. Her audition was an a cappella rendition of Proud Mary, but it didn't earn her a golden ticket to Hollywood. In 2008, Goodspeed was found dead in her car, which was parked just down the street from Abdul's home. Police ruled her death to be a suicide via drug overdose. It was subsequently reported that a week before her death, Goodspeed had sent flowers to Abdul. Since Goodspeed's audition, nearly three years earlier, Abdul had received over 100 letters from her, in addition to multiple phone calls and even a few attempts to visit her at her home. During a 2008 appearance on Barbara Walters' show, Barbara Live, Abdul revealed that Goodspeed had been stalking her for years before American Idol producers brought her into audition and had been sending her disturbing letters for almost 18 years. Abdul told Walters, I said, this girl is a stalker of mine. Please do not let her in. Everyone knew. I was shaking. Abdul claimed the producers ignored her pleas and let Goodspeed audition because they figured it would be entertaining to watch as Abdul stressed. If you or anyone you know is struggling or in crisis, has been a victim of sexual assault, contact the relevant sources 
Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline by dialing 988 or by calling 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE. That's 1-800-656-4673. 